Your grace will be enough. Your grace will be enough. Under fire, but we won't fall. We will never be alone. You'll always be enough. You'll always be enough. Now in God we trust. In his name we hope. I know God will not be shaken. God is here with us. He's already won. I know God will not be shaken. trust to the unknown I know you go before I know you go before leave my heart now in your way forward carrying your name your promise never fails your promise never fails now we God we trust in his name we hope I know God will be shaken. God is here with us. He's already won. I know God will not be Your name is sure, and you will fight for us, our hope forever secure, in you alone. You finish what you begun, forever strong in your love, your name You are 
You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, no, you never stop working Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are and you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 
are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, that. darkness my God that is who you are you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you are I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. Oh, I have lived in the goodness of God. Yeah. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. In your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. 
to me with my life laid down i'm surrendered now i give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God In all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able oh i will sing of the goodness of god Be no way. 
trust in you, God, you have the final say. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. God, we believe for it from the impossible. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it.
unmovable and breaking the unbreakable. Thank you for being with us today, Lord. Continue to work in our hearts this morning. Be with Pastor. Fill him with your spirit, Lord, as he brings forth your word for us as we continue our worship and surrender it all at your feet. Thank you, Lord, so much for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to start a new series titled The Pursuit of Happiness. If there's one thing that I've noticed over the last 10 years, it's this drive for stuff. And I touch on it all the time. But I I really think that we have this continual pursuit for more. And it's not more of the right things. It's, It's just more stuff. We have this mentality that if I get this, I'm going to be happy. If I don't get it, oh, it's going to, I'm going to be unhappy. Or when I do get it, it's not enough. It doesn't deliver the way I thought it would deliver. And so we're constantly striving for more and more. In some ways, I think the American way hindered us when it comes to our relationship with God. Because coming to this country, it afforded so many people so many more opportunities. And it gave them opportunities to have more freedom. Yes. Also gave them more opportunity to to get wealth, to have money. Most of our population in this country live better than 98% of the world. Now, that may seem hard to believe, but it's the truth. And so what I'm saying is that I I, I love my country. I love America. I love the fact that I'm in America. I love the fact that I have the freedoms that I have in this country, even though they're eroding. But the problem is this, is that we have this constant pursuit of happiness. It's in our our, uh, Declaration of Independence. This pursuit of happiness. But what is that? And how does that look for us as Christ followers? Over the next few weeks, I want to touch on money and things. I want to touch on on perfectionism, man. That that perfect mindset. I want to touch on approval. I want to touch on comfort. And this morning, I want to start with a theme that seems to be more relevant today than really in any other time in history. The pursuit of fame and popularity. I want to be known. I want to be admired. I want to be liked. I want to be followed. Oh, man, you know, you're always looking on your Facebook page. See how many followers you have. I want to be accepted. I want to be respected. I want to be famous. There is this drive in our culture today for fame and popularity. We want it so bad. And you're going to be surprised how many of you sitting here this morning and those who are within earshot of my voice, you're going to be surprised how much you crave it also. Today's title is Fame and Popularity. Let's pray. Lord, help us today, God, to look deep in the depths of our soul, Lord, to allow you to do surgery, God, allow you to change those things in our hearts, Lord, that, Father, we may not even be aware of. I thank you, God, that you love us and you care for us. And, that, Lord, you you have a desire for us to to be happy, but our happiness needs to be rooted in not this world. So, Father, teach us today through your Holy Spirit. We ask this humbly now in Jesus' name and all the church said. I just made a statement that some of you are going to be surprised about fame and popularity. 
Most of you are saying right now, I'm not chasing fame. I don't really want to be popular. But you're going to be surprised this morning to discover that you really are. I think, I think in some respects, we all deal with a micro-fame mentality. Don't want a whole lot of fame, but you do want a little. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Getting credit for the work that you did. If somebody else gets credit for it, oh, man, that rubs against you the wrong way. Ooh, it upsets you. Somebody else getting credit for my work? I put the work in. They didn't put the work in. I did. Or that person who says, I don't want credit for anything, but yet when they do it, they let everybody know that they did it. They keep turning around and letting you know that, well, it was really me that did this, or, you know, I did this, or I did that. Or those people who want to let you know how hard something was they did. So it draws attention to them. Oh, it was so difficult. Oh, oh, it was just so hard. I don't care what it was. It was just, oh, it was just too much. Oh, church. The change is mentality, man. We're all looking to get credit for something. Whether it be credit for the work you did or or letting people know how hard that was that you, what you just did, it was just so difficult and all that you're such a servant. Or wanting everyone to know how good of a person you are. Doing everything you can to make everybody know how good of a person you are. Or, or for the social media people, putting that photo up, and man, checking back in three minutes to see if you got any likes on it. Oh, man, did people like what I just put? You want to hear something crazy? I did a lot of Google research when I was putting this together. It's so funny. Google, you can find anything, right? But there's a lot of amazing things out there. And I just go, man, you know what? I really believe people are like this. Did you know that some people will take a photo down on their Facebook page or Instagram if they don't get a like within five minutes? If in five minutes nobody likes it, they take it down. I failed. They didn't like it. No church. We all deal with micro fame, man. And if you think you're really above all this, like if you're like, you know, pastor, I'm not really trying to be known. I'm not trying to be broadly admired. Well, let me tell you this. Your kids and your grandchildren are. I'm going to give you some stats this morning to blow your mind. UCLA did a study. They did a study. Here's what they found. With 10 to 12 years old, 12 year olds, the biggest goal wasn't financial security, it wasn't achievement, and it wasn't community, it was fame. 10 to 12 year olds are craving fame more than anything. When I was 10 to 12 years old, I was worrying about, man, if I was going to go out and play baseball that day, or get to ride my bike, or if I was going to get to watch Saturday morning cartoons. These kids want fame. Viacom, Velocity is an animation, animation and video studio. They're looking for content all the time. Here's what they found. 22 to 37-year-olds. Are there any 22 to 37-year-olds in here? Any? No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We talked, about, we talked about lying last week, I think. So <laughs> This is going to trip you out. Listen to this. 50% of them believe that their life should be made into a movie. They believe their life should be made into a movie. I'm not trying to be rude, but that cracked me up when I read that. I'm like, what? You really think your life is like a Spider-Man or Avenger movie? I mean, you think you're, what? Are you kidding me? One out of two, five out of ten, ten out of twenty said that my life needs to be made into a movie. That's the craziest thing I ever heard of, man. I cracked up on that. I'm like, you guys are insane. And I'm telling you, there's some other things that you need to understand culturally that's going on right now when it comes to fame and popularity. Listen to this. People who want to be a household name 
Like, if you hear that name, you just know who they are. Check this out. This is just a trip you out. One in 12 would disown their family to become a household name. One in 12. One in 12. Listen to this one. One in nine would give up their marriage. We see this all the time when it comes to celebrities. One in six would give up having kids, and that percentage goes up depending on whatever day it is, right? This is where people are at today in our culture, church. And it seems like every young person that I talk to, they all tell me they want to do the same thing. They either want to make a movie, they want to be a producer, they want to be a director, or they want to do a podcast, or they want to be on YouTube. I, I kid you not, it trips me out. So when I hear, see a stat, 50% believe their life should be made into a film or social media thing, right? I, I, get, I get what's going on in society. Now, let me be clear on something. There's nothing wrong with being famous. There's nothing wrong with it. Typically, if you excelled in any field, or you were one of the best at what you did, or if you were really a difference maker, fame seemed to be inevitable. It was just going to follow you. It's just how it was. If you remember what 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 16 said, it said, So David did as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army, and all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord made all the nations fear him. You need to understand something here. David did what God wanted him to do. God, David wasn't seeking his own glory in this instance. Now, there were times when David did, and we saw the consequences in David's life. But here it says that he did as God commanded, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Gezer pretty good sized territory and it said so david's fame spread throughout every land here's the reason it spread it was for god's glory it was for god's purpose it was for what god wanted to accomplish with the nation of israel and there's other examples of people in the bible who were famous i mean let's think about solomon solomon was world famous when Solomon was anointed king, the Lord came to him and said, Ask whatever you want, and I will give it to you. Solomon asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for fame. He asked for wisdom. Why? He said, Because I do not know how to govern such a great people. Give me the wisdom and the ability to do it. And God said, Because you didn't ask for those things, riches and fame, I'm going to give it to you. See, Solomon asked for the right thing. Out of that, Solomon became famous. Fortunately, Solomon also became a train wreck when you read his, his life in the Bible. Think about Jesus. Was there anybody more famous than Jesus? I mean, here's this guy going around, raising people from the dead, healing every type of sickness you can ever imagine, standing up to the, the, the Pharisees on issues of, of faith in God. I mean, he was incredible. And it says in the Gospels that he became famous and the crowds followed him by the hundreds. You may not know this, but I'm a pretty big deal too. I'm pretty famous. Yeah, my dog loves me. My dog thinks I am famous, man. He loves me. He follows me. He does anything. I mean, I'm famous with my dog, and that's about as far as my fame goes. Here's the thing, church. I want you to remember this. There's nothing wrong with fame, but you have got to put this in your mind and your heart right now. This is so key. The desire for fame is dangerous to yours and my faith. It is dangerous. I'm going to explain that to you as we get further into this study this morning. Now, you have to remember, the nature and accessibility of fame has changed over recent years, has it not? As I said before, in years past, people became famous because they did something significant or 
because of their occupation. Maybe Neil Armstrong being the first guy on, on the moon or some great accomplishment. Maybe you were a dancer or an athlete, a singer. Maybe a movie star or a hero. Maybe you were a scientist that found a cure. It used to be an accomplishment was something big until the rise of social media and YouTube. It changed everything. It changed everything, church. Today, you can become famous for creating content. You could play a guitar on your couch and sing a song and play the guitar. And it could go viral. And you could either be good or bad. Right? Like there's people that have become famous on YouTube who were horrible musicians but, or comedians. But people like them for whatever reason. Silly content. Maybe you're discovered like Justin Bieber. The Bieb used to sit there and play and sing on YouTube and all of a sudden he blew up. Here's what tripped me out, man. People pay to watch you play games. They subscribe and pay to watch you play games. My granddaughter will watch kids open toys for hours. Craziest thing I've ever seen. I'll be like, what, what, what are you doing, girl? Oh, Grandpa. Oh, Grandpa. Oh, Grandpa. I want this. I want that. Oh, geez. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Check this out. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Forbes magazine did a feature on a young boy named Ryan who was six years old who made $11 million in one year reviewing toys. Yeah. Now, that's crazy, huh? Have you ever heard of the bread face lady? Oh, man. She's huge. She's huge on social media. Huge. She really blew up like six years ago. I mean, she may have waned a little bit, but she was huge. This lady would take different types of bread and smash her face into it and roll her face into it, and she had millions and millions of subscribers. I'm thinking, are people that nuts? I pulled up one of her videos. I was like, you got to be kidding me. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> She's smashing her, takes big loaves of bread. She'll take stacks of bread. She'll take them, and she'll smash her face into it. And I'm thinking, people are lunatics, man. Or maybe you're a fluke, like the boy from Target named Alex. <laughs> it was a Sunday afternoon. There was a girl in Target, and she tweeted a photo of a cute boy at checkout. The boy was, was a checker at, at, at uh, Target. If you can bring up the photo, this is him. This is what she tweeted. Now check this out. This was on, on a Sunday afternoon. When the day had started, Alex had 144 Twitter followers. By the end of the day, by Sunday evening, he had over 300,000. And the next day, he was on CNN. Isn't that crazy? Over a photo of a boy, he became an overnight success. You used to be famous for doing something that was remarkable. Now, if you're cute at checkout, everybody's in love with you. In society today, you're one break away. You're one post from blowing up, from being discovered and going big, becoming a YouTube star, a verified YouTube star, and thousands and thousands of followers, and you're being paid to make videos. That's the fame of today. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to build a following and make a living and, and make a difference in people's lives. I'm not saying that. But I will tell you this. Wealth often makes it difficult to follow Jesus, and so does fame. And I'm going to tell you why. Fame moves the, tra to, to, ugh, the trajectory of your life away from God, away from others, and towards you. When the focus is on you, and some of you better hear this this morning because some of you have this problem, it's hard to focus on others. When the focus is on you, it's hard to focus on others. 
Let me tell you something. Alex at Target was never prepared for what happened. He is no longer on social media because the crush was too great for him. It destroyed him. He was not ready for it. And that's the thing. Most of the time, we're not really ready for the fame and popularity that we so much desire to have. Perhaps, church, perhaps we should maybe take a look at John the Baptist. I think John the Baptist lived it best. For those of you who don't know, John the Baptist, this was Jesus' cousin. He was born six, six months before Jesus. He was the prophesied one who was going to come and prepare the way for the Lord. He was a crazy dude. I ain't going to lie. He was a little bit out there, right? He hung out in the wilderness. He wore animal skins. He ate locusts and honey. And all he said was prepare and repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. When Jesus showed up on the scene, he says, I'm unworthy to loosen his sandals. Today we would say untie his shoes. John the Baptist summed it up the best of anybody in the Bible. If you go to John chapter 3, verse 30, it says this, He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. Church, we don't really like that. We don't really want that. We don't like anybody greater in our lives than ourselves. And so here's, the, here's what we need to analyze this morning. It's a question of motive. It's a question of motive, church. What is your motive? What is my motive? The first question is this. Who are you representing? Who are you representing? And the second one is whose approval matters most? And what I want to do over the next few minutes is to unpack this and for you and I to try to be honest with each other this morning. We're going to have an honest discussion today, okay? The Holy Spirit wants to have an honest discussion with you today. So let's be honest. And let's don't give our standard Christian answers that we always want to give, right? When you show up somewhere, when you post something, when you talk to somebody, who are you representing? Who? Are you rep representing yourself? Your family? Who are you representing? And don't be like the kids in Sunday school when the Sunday school teacher says, what's brown and has a fluffy tail and eats nuts and climbs trees? And the kid's thinking, well, it sounds like a squirrel, but because I'm in church, I better say it sounds like, I think it's Jesus. Don't give me that answer. You be honest with yourself. Because here's the thing. I'm the pastor, and I'm supposed to say that I represent Jesus. That's what I'm supposed to tell you. But so often I'm representing me. So on honestly, I'm representing me. I'm being honest with you this morning. I was thinking about, as this is kind of playing out in my head, what's a typical Sunday morning for me? And I think about, what are you going to think about me? What are you going to think about me? What are you going to think about what I'm wearing? What are you going to think about my sermon? What do you think about the pics in the stories? Are they cool? Are they funny? What are you going to think? And here's what I came up with this morning while finishing up this message. I realize that I'm trying to represent me much more than I am trying to represent God. And the Lord said, D, you need to rethink some things. <laughs> because honestly, why am I standing before you this morning? Am I standing before you so I can get some kind of a fix you know, oh, let me stand up in front of people and make them think I know something. What is the reason I'm standing before you this morning? It needs to be because I want to glorify God. But I'll be honest with you. If that was purely my intent, I would probably have a lot different perspective and delivery for you. But I want to make sure that I'm giving you some good dialogue and content and it's coming to you and it's understandable and all these other types of things. 
God reminded me of something out of 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 20. Paul writes, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. See, church, we need to come back to God this morning. We need to really come back to God this morning, and we really need to come back to God, and we really need to understand that we haven't really been representing him like we should. See, it says here that we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Now, an ambassador is the highest-ranking diplomat sent from one nation to another nation to represent the home territory. That's what an ambassador is. So if you and I are Christ's ambassador, you and I are representing him and have been sent out on his behalf. That's who we are. That's who we are. Church, when you walk into a room, the light walks into the room with you. When you walk into a room, hope walks into the room with you. Why? Because we're representing Christ. And if Christ is in us, then those are the things that should show up in the room. Not me and not you. I should not see you. I should see Christ in you. And it's the same with me. But we don't live that way. Right? Like I shared with you guys some time back. It used to be when we would go and visit a national park or something, we would take a picture of whatever it was. Click, and that would be in the picture. Now it's me. Click. And whatever it is is behind me because I'm more important. Church, we are representing Christ by what we say. We are representing Christ by how we act. We are representing Christ by how we show love. How we dress, how we post should represent Christ. We're not the insane clown posse, man. We shouldn't look, I mean, come on. Whatever we do should bring glory to God. Who are you representing? Who are you really representing this morning? Don't tell me Jesus. Be honest, because so often you and I are not representing him. We are representing ourselves. And that's the truth. That's the cold, hard truth. And you know how I know that? I listen to the conversations. Your conversations tell me who's number one in your life. Church, let the Spirit of God do a cleansing work in your heart this morning. Less of us, more of him. This first question, deal with it. Let it invade your heart. Let God separate the spirit and the flesh so that only the spirit has your heart so that we can represent Jesus and stop representing ourselves. The second question is, Whose approval matters most? Well, the same answer that we're going to give, we're going to give our Christianese answer, should be Jesus. I'm living for God. But are we? Are we really living for God, man? Because I think we live for the approval of people. I think we live for the approval of people. Trust me. We live for the approval of people. Think about how long you looked at yourself in the mirror this morning and making sure you look just right. Making sure that you were color coordinated. Making sure you were this. Making sure your hair looked good. Making sure of this. Making sure of that. Why? Because you want to stand up to the approval of people. You want them to say, oh, you look fly, girl. Man, you look fly, dude. Whose approval matters? It's God's approval that matters, not your approval and not my approval. We shouldn't care what others think, but I do. I'll be honest with you, I do. Now, when I say I don't care what others think, let me be clear on that. I'm not trying to say it in like some arrogant way, like I could care less what you think, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to live my life. That's dumb. First off, my life better line up with God's life. And if it lines up with God's life and then you don't approve for me, well, that's between you and God. But if I'm being obnoxious and arrogant and being a jerk? Well, yeah, you shouldn't like me. You shouldn't approve of me. 
Psychology trips me out, right? I used to be like this anti-psychology person, but actually I've learned that really psychologists, they just kind of back up what the Bible says, but they just do it in a secular way. It's true. So I use what they say and bring it over here and say, yeah, but you know, God said it first, so you know, you're a copycat. Um, here's Here's what psychologists say. They say the desire for fame has its roots in injury and neglect. That's where it has its roots. Maybe you had hard-to-please parents, or maybe you were rejected by friends, or maybe you've been overlooked, right? Or maybe you were in a difficult situation and you quit and it changed your life forever. I don't know. But the bottom line is, is that it comes from injury and neglect, and it leaves you feeling insignificant, it's like people tell me all the time, oh, you need to put your kids in public school because that's how they learn how to, how, to, how to socialize. No, that's not how they learn how to socialize. Kids that typically are homeschooled do better when they go to college. Why? Because they're confident in who they are. Because they've grown up in an environment that teaches them confidence and love and grace and teaches them to stand on their own two feet. That insignificant feeling It gets into the root of who you are. And suddenly, you want to be known. You want to be noticed. Do you like me? Recognize me. Validate me. Accept me. That becomes the mantra in people's hearts. And as I said, these micro cravings for fame, they they begin to take root. They begin to take root. And if you're honest... You all deal with this just like I do. I don't know, Pastor. I don't think so. Okay, I'll give you an example. Some of you overcommit. I know I do, and the Lord has taken me and said, nope, you can't do that anymore. Right? I'm saying no to a lot of things. Times when people say, hey, you know what? Can we go to lunch today? Nope, can't go. Hey, can we go get coffee? Nope, can't go. You know why? Because it's not in my best interest to go and do it. I have other things I have to do. Some of you are overly sensitive. You're really overly sensitive about things. You can criticize everybody else, but if somebody criticizes you, oh my gosh, you lose your mind. Paul said in Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 4 and 6, He says, for we speak as messengers approved by God to be trusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. Paul says, look, dude, we are messengers. We're approved by God. You and I are approved by God this morning, church. And God entrusted us with a job. That job was to share Jesus Christ with people who are lost. I ask you, have you done your job this week? Have you shared Christ? Have you The, the good news that you've been entrusted with, have you shared it? Paul says our purpose is to please God, not people. It pleases God when we're obedient like David. When David did what God commanded him to do, God said, boom, here you go. Here's the thing. God alone examines the motives of our hearts. I don't care what you and I say to each other. God knows what your heart is. He knows what motivates you this morning. Church, we're not called to be famous We are called to be faithful. That's a big difference. We're not called to be famous. We're called to be faithful. Jesus isn't going to say, well done, my good and faithful or famous social media star. That's not what he's going to say. When we stand before the Lord and if we've done the things of the Lord, he's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We're called to be faithful. That may or may not make you famous. It doesn't matter. We're not living for the approval of people. We're living for the approval of God. Church, we're not striving to become celebrities. 
We're submitting ourselves to become servants. Do you understand that? When you see yourself as a servant, that's a nice word there. The actual word there is slave. We don't like that word because it brings, it brings up bad thoughts and, and, and things. But the bottom line is, is that you and I were bought by the blood of Jesus. And we belong to him. Stop trying to be that dude. Stop trying to be that woman. Let me tell you something. It ain't pleasing to your father in heaven, man. It's not. Church, we're not living for the applause of the crowd. We're living from the approval of God. From his approval. Church, he's already approved us. Less of me, more of him. That's where we have to be at. Psalm 115 verse 1 says, Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. Not to us, but to your name, God. Because of your love and faithfulness. It's because of God's love and faithfulness to us, church, that we should desire for God's name to be the glory, not your name and not my name. To God be the glory. Not to D, not to any of you, not to the refuge church. You know, it's crazy to me that Christians today, they're busy building their brand. That just drives me crazy. I'm building my brand. What brand? Your brand is Jesus. That's your brand. But no, we think like the world. So now I've got a, I've got like, I don't watch it much anymore, but when I used to watch like church TV and stuff, right, it would be like the program would come on and would be like such and such church, you know, or such and such church hour or whatever it is. You know what it is now? It's the name of the pastor. It's the pastor's name. Very seldom, if you ever pull up church tv or anything do you ever see the name of the church it's the pastor of the church because they're the brand no we are servants pastors are servants we are servants of the most high god my brand is jesus jc is my brand church when we build our own popularity When we try to build our own fame, in the end, we see that it's not really the answer, that it normally leads to some sort of catastrophe. The Bible tells us that. I didn't give you this verse this morning. I I got it on the way here. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2 says, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Everything's meaningless, man. The only thing that means anything is Jesus. It's Jesus. When you stand before God, it's going to be Christ imprinted on you that God's going to see. He's going, yeah, you're good. It ain't going to have nothing to do with your name and who you are. It's going to have everything to do with Jesus. If you don't believe the Bible, then listen to what Jim Carrey said. This tripped me out. He says, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they dreamed of so that they can see that it's not the answer. Isn't that crazy? This dude was at the height of popularity, man. He was in every movie you could think of. He's almost disappeared. You know what he found out? Really wasn't what life is about, church. Less of me and more of him. I'll end with this. Psalm 102, verse 11 says this. My my life passes as swiftly as the evening shadows. Do you understand how quickly your life and my life is going? I am withering away like, like grass. Like, I, I'll kid you not, I was, I was driving the other day, and I had my hands up on the steering wheel. I said, man, where did these old hands come from? They're wrinkled, and they're, they're, they're thin-looking, and they're just like, I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know. What, you, what? No, I'm withering away. But you, O oh Lord, will sit on your throne forever. Your fame will endure to every generation, church. And that needs to be our heart this morning. 
less of me and more of him. Stop striving to be somebody you already are in Christ. Let it all go and let God have your life. Thank you, Lord, <clears throat> for reminding us, Lord, that we're not called to be celebrities. We're not called to be famous. We're not called to build our brand. We're called to build yours. And so, Father, thank you for this timely message, for, especially for me. And I pray, God, that it would impact my brothers and sisters, Lord, that we would take an honest look at our lives and stop playing these games, realizing that we're not representing you, Lord, in the fashion that we should be. And I know I fall so short on that, God. And I just pray, Lord, that today would be just an amazing day for us to just be in your presence and to sense and know your love, experience your love, God. And just look at all the good things that you've given us, Lord, despite who we are. You love us, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to try because we already have Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.